everyone today we are going to be making a stamp basically um, using styrofoam um, we're doing something called printmaking so we're gonna create something that we can make copies of and every time we get a copy from that thing um, we call it a print so we are making prints um, we are gonna look at the work of Ted Harrison for this and um, he was a very famous painter who painted pictures of the Yukon in Canada um, he used a lot of very bright colors and a lot of kind of warm and cool colors to create contrast um, and then he worked really hard to kind of simplify things so he focused a lot on the shape of things and not necessarily all the little details you can see the shape of a mountain you can see the shape of some ice but you're not looking at all the little details he does include animals sometimes. Um, you might also, there's the shape of the sun there. Um, in some of his, he includes uh, like people walking along the bottom or trees as well up in the foreground here. So um, when we create our design today, we're gonna focus on creating the landscape. If you wanna add an animal or a person or something like that in, you can, um, but I'm not gonna talk about that. So when you get started, you are going to have to find a piece of styrofoam to use. So here's some examples of things that work. Um, a takeout container, the top of the lid can work really well. Um, you may have to, if somebody wrote on it, you might have to use actually the inside part, but you don't want anything that's gonna have like a texture. Um, you might also have like a meat tray or something from the grocery store or like a deli tray. Um, again, if there's like a raised area like this, you're going to want to avoid that and kind of use just the main flat area. My favorite thing is a styrofoam plate. Um, they're, they're really cheap and easy to get. Um, you may have them at home. Um, any of those will work as long as they're styrofoam that is a flat, smooth surface. So when you get started, um, you will need to basically outline the shape of whatever paper you're using. Um, index cards work really well for this because they're already cut to size. These are three by five inches. Um, I think they make some that are five by seven. I don't know if those would fit on the plate. Obviously these ones do. Um, you could also do like a photograph size. So I made these papers four by six um, and really any paper will work. Um, copy paper has a tendency to be really thin and kind of curl up if you're gonna use some of that. Um, a thicker, like a white construction paper works really well. Um, cardstock works really well. As long as it's, it's a blank paper, it should work. Um, it just may curl if it's really thin. So um, if I were gonna do a four by six, you can see that's actually not gonna fit on here. Um, so if I was gonna do like a four by six, I might have to look for more of like a tray to use instead. So it's really up to you, but you want to figure out what size paper you're using first before you get started. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and use an index card. So when I do this, I need to also have um, a pen and a lot of colored markers. You, even if it's just a regular set of markers, that should be fine. If you have some extras, those would be good too. All right, so now I've got my pen, so I'm ready to do my design. <clears throat> I've got my paper I'm gonna print on. I've got my colored markers. And the other thing that you're gonna need is um, either like a damp paper towel, one that you've squeezed the water out of, or baby wipes. Baby wipes actually work really well too if you have those around. You don't wanna use like alcohol wipes, those. Those won't work, you want baby wipes. Um, and if you have like a little spray bottle at home, that helps, a lot of people don't and that's fine. Um, you may need a little extra water on a baby wipe. Sometimes they're a little bit drier than what we need. So I usually add just a tiny bit of water to them. All right, so when you get started on the design part, we wanna include the parts of a landscape. The foreground, which is closest to us when we look at a picture. The middle ground, which is a little bit in the distance, and then the background that is very far away. And then, of course, the sky is part of the background. So when I get started, the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna use my pen for this, if you're using um, a Sharpie, that's fine too. A Sharpie will work as long as it's permanent, but I'm actually gonna trace my index card so I know where my picture space is. 
So make sure you take your time and go kind of slow, but you know, if you mess up outside the index card, it's not gonna show up in the final artwork. All right, so that gives me my picture space. Then I wanna add in sort of these spaces. And if you remember, I talked about how Ted Harrison focused on the edge of a space. So um, different lines create different effects. If I'm gonna use more of a zigzag line, it might look like trees or like grass. If I do more of a circle line, it's gonna obviously look like rocks. Um, it's just kind of a wiggly, bumpy line, just look more like a rough ground. So you're starting at the bottom. If you wanna include something like a tree, you can definitely do that. But basically, you wanna press in a little bit, not so hard that you're ripping the styrofoam. You just wanna kinda of create a line. Like that, that'll work. Um, and then kind of build up from there. So you can repeat similar lines or you can kind of make new lines. I'm doing something a little bit more zigzaggy here. Just be careful, if you start to press too hard and it's actually ripping the styrofoam, you need to kind of ease up. Um, you don't want it to rip. You don't really have to press that hard at all. So um, I think maybe I'm gonna add some hills now. So I'm gonna move on to the middle ground. Um, there's different styles of hills, flat ones like plateaus. You can kind of make it dip like a valley or drop like a canyon. You can also do your hills one at a time. So you could do it like this, where they're sort of layered. And you can do as many rows of hills as you want. That's fine. So um, I would say, let me show you an example here. You can see there's lots and lots of rows here. So that's up to you. And then the background, looking at more mountainous, the Yukon has mostly mountainous areas. Um, it's much kind of higher elevation in most areas. So um, there's different types of mountains. Not saying all these are in the Yukon, but um, you could do it like a volcanic mountain that looks like a crater at the top, a dome. A folded mountain is a little bit more kind of zigzag shaped. And then a fault block mountain usually is kind of pushed up and sort of flat there. And then it kind of gradually comes back down. So um, again, you can add one mountain. You could add a lot of mountains. That's going to be up to you. I think I'm going to do one more over here. Um, Okay, now when you get to the sky, um, you want to focus on sort of dividing the sky up. A lot of times Ted Harrison's paintings would feature nighttime skies with the northern lights, aurora borealis, um, which is like the ribbons of light in the sky. You can kind of see that effect that he creates. Um, you can include the sun or the moon. Um, a lot of times his cloud forms were also very kind of wavy lines. Um, there's some ideas here you could work with but you do want to divide up that sky space as well. So um, I think I'm going to do sort of a sun or a moon here. And then I'm going to kind of focus my ribbons sort of coming from the top and then kind of coming down like that. All right, so once you've finished the sky, All right, so once you finish the sky, then you're ready to move on to using the washable markers to color your spaces. A couple of recommendations, make sure you're thinking about contrast. So warm and cool colors, um, dark versus light colors, so that it doesn't all look the same. So I'm not gonna take one color and color the whole sky. Um, the other recommendation is use the side of the marker as much as possible when you're coloring because it leaves more of the marker on there and you also wanna be gentle when you're coloring, if you're pressing hard, you're actually gonna be pushing into the styrofoam and then it's not gonna show up very well. So just be aware of that when you're working. Um, you can definitely use the same color more than once. You also can, I mean, this depends on if your markers are new or not, but you can mix too to kind of make your own colors. So I could add in some orange and kind of make my own color there, but that is gonna kind of affect the markers. So you do wanna be careful. If it gets in a spot you don't want it, um, that you haven't colored yet, you'll kind of color over that later, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But basically, you wanna just kind of add those different colors into those different spaces. And um, as you go, you might notice it looks like it's kind of disappearing sometimes. That's okay, it's still gonna show up even if, if it fades on the styrofoam, it'll be fine. So I'm using mostly warm colors here in my sky. And then I may use them again 
down towards the ground. All right, so as you're going, just make sure, I think that one's gonna be too much of the same. Make sure you're paying attention to making each space stand out with its own colors, not using the same color in spaces that are next to each other. And then just trying your best to use the side of the marker and be gentle so that it doesn't end up pushing in on the styrofoam. All right, so when you get done with the sky and you move on to the ground, it's a good idea to look for a color you haven't used yet to kind of really emphasize that the ground starts there. So I'm gonna use this blue that I haven't used yet. All right, and then I think I've got like a turquoise kind of blue green. I'm gonna use that over here. All right, so a couple of spaces left. Um, I'm gonna use this for the hills. I got two colors left, so I could go back and repeat. I don't think I've used this green yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this green in, and I think I'm gonna use that turquoise again. I really like how bright that is. And last space here. Okay, so now that I'm done coloring all these spaces, I am going to get my index card ready. So, um, like I said, it's a good idea if you're gonna use a baby wipe, get it a little extra wet. You don't want dripping water coming out of it. Same thing with a paper towel. And this is trial and error. So you might find that you try it and it doesn't really show up all that well. That means that the paper was too dry, okay? So you just kinda have to play by ear. I do find that if I put a little water on the paper first, whether it's just dripping some water on or spraying it, and then I kinda spread that water out with the wipe, it tends to work the best. It is gonna curl on you a little bit, so you will have to hold it, and then you very quickly want to get it on. So line it up. I always line the bottom edge up before I put it down. And then you're gonna to wanna to press it. And I use both hands so that I can hold with one hand and kind of rub with the other. And like I said, it's trial and error. It may work great the first time, or it might not work at all. You just have to kind of look at what you did and figure out what you need to do different. So, all right, so here we go. All right, so it worked pretty well. There's this spot over here where it didn't show up though. I can still see all the marker right there. So here's what I can do if something like that happens. I can just press on that area real quick, lay it back down, rub it again, just in that spot, and get that to transfer. So you can kind of go back and fix it as you go. Um, this worked pretty well. I'd say the colors transferred fairly well. It probably could have done a little bit better, but honestly, I would say this is a success if nothing shows up on the paper. You don't have to recolor it. You can just get a new paper wet or re-wet the one you have and put it back down. So um, if it doesn't show up, then don't, don't try recoloring it. Um, just go ahead and re-wet the paper or wet a new paper and lay it back down because that obviously means you weren't using enough water. All right, so um, you can make as many of these as you want. So there's the finished landscape. All right, I hope you have fun.